All right, guys, we got another fun video for you today. Remember when I bought it in the last video, I didn't show you a ton, but basically it broke down the test drive and I had to get it trailered home. Once I got it trailered home, I ran into three, I'll call kind of major issues, vacuum leaks, carburetor leaks, and the big one was electrical. I've got those three sorted out and I've had a chance to drive it around and put a few miles on it. I'll show you how easy it starts after doing all that work. So just go give it one nice, good pump. Fires right up. In the process of doing so, I found a handful of other things that are pretty frustrating. Number one, uh, we'll probably start from the most minor to the most major. Number one, the tailgate in the back, I'll show you. Um, basically, it doesn't open correctly, so I gotta address that. Number two, down here on the floor, um, the MP203 transfer case really doesn't wanna go into anything except for high, like where you just drive it around. So I can't get it in the high lock, I can't get it in the low lock. Um, I gotta address that. And then finally, the big one. Uh, I've got a pretty major leak on the brake master cylinder, so today we're gonna replace that. Um, and yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, it's obvious I need a brake master cylinder, but which one do I need? If you go online and look, they're gonna give you two options. Let me explain to you how you figure that out for your truck. Open up the driver's side door and look at this placard. It is gonna call out what size front axle you have. It's either gonna be a 3,500 pound or a 4,500 pound. What you need to know is the 3,500 pound is for like a Dana 44, typically found on a three quarter ton Dodge. The Dana 60, which is normally in the rear of a three quarter ton, could be in the front of a one ton Dodge, like a W300 or a D300. So that 4,500 pound axle versus the 3,500 pound is what you match up when you're looking at Advance, O'Reilly, Napa, whatever, and it basically tells you what master cylinder you need because there's different master cylinders for each truck. So I will put in the description of the video which one was correct for the 3,500 pound. Chances are, if you're watching this video, that's what you're looking at. But if you've got a Dana 60 front axle, you will want the other one. So once you grab that master cylinder, take it out of the box, read the instructions. We'll dive right into the bench bleeding, which you need to do on a vise. Um, you wanna do that so you don't damage anything. You get all the air out of the master cylinder before you start trying to actually install, or better yet, bleed the brakes. Okay, now that we got our brand new brake master cylinder, I wanna show you a couple things about brake bleeding. Now, uh, I'm gonna use this tool here in a little bit, but don't worry about it if you don't have one. You can use a screwdriver. This is just a leftover master cylinder push rod that I have from another vehicle that I know fits in there and it's already got a rounded tip. But if you don't have this, any, you know, pipe or rod, whatever, will do fine. What you wanna do is you wanna set up your master cylinder in a vise like this. Um, and then they give you these little caps that thread in here. So what you wanna do is first things first, you're gonna fill it up with fluid until it starts draining out. Basically, you're letting it gravity bleed. Once you've got a good flow of fluid coming out, then go ahead and put your caps in and then you can actually start the regular like bleeding process, but this just allows everything to get through the system and get most of the air out before you bench bleed it. Also, um, you wanna make sure that you've got it tight in the vise so it doesn't go anywhere. And last thing they talk about, once you get it in here and you start pumping, um, you don't wanna do super long strokes. It's like three quarters of an inch to an inch and you basically keep pumping until you can only get like an eighth of an inch stroke. Got some brand new fluid here, which we're gonna use. Um, Anyways, this is synthetic. You don't really need synthetic. It's an old truck, but this is what I had lying around. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. Okay. And then we're gonna wait. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Now, take your cap. Go ahead, tighten this up. Take your rag and go ahead and make sure that whatever that dripped on, if it's painted, you want to clean it off because it will, it will damage paint. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, for this next part, we got our plugs in there. I went ahead and marked this so you can see right where it's even here with the end. And this tiny mark is an eighth, three quarter, and one. We don't want to press it any more than an inch. So we want to stay right in there when we press it when it's before it's bled. And then once we can only press it this little eighth of an inch, then we know it's about as good as it's going to be and we can go ahead and install it on the vehicle. I'm pushing on it right there. It's barely going an eighth, but I'm still getting bubbles. So I'm going to read the instructions again. We're going to do this slowly. Ideally, we don't get any more bubbles. 
We're gonna go ahead and disconnect everything, pull this off and install a new one for 75 bucks. Okay, removal is really self-explanatory. You have to remove both of the brake lines going into your master cylinder. Then you remove the master cylinder itself from the brake booster. It is relatively heavy, so just be careful when you're pulling it off. You can see the massive leak I had here. If you've never seen a brake booster before, here's just kind of a close up of what it looks like. You've got a seal in there. You could adjust that rod, but I'm not gonna touch it because I'm pretty sure everything is right where it needs to be. Then go ahead, grab your new brake master cylinder and slide it into the studs on your booster. And it's basically just the reverse of what we just did. You wanna bolt it back up with using washers, of course, to the brake booster. And then you are gonna slowly attach your brake lines. Now be careful because you've already bench bled everything. So you wanna kinda of time this out correctly so that after you get it bolted back up, that you're not gonna lose all of your fluid. So just take off one cap at a time, connect that one, get it started by hand. Don't cross thread anything you know, and then move on to the other one. You don't wanna do both at the same time because once you take those red caps out, you are going to start losing fluid. But don't worry, it only drips out. You're not gonna lose it that fast unless you totally mess something up. Make sure everything is nice and tight at the end, and then you can go ahead and top off the master cylinder. You definitely wanna to top everything off and put the cap on nice and tight because the next step after this is to actually go to all four corners and bleed your, bleed your brakes just like you normally would. You know what's next, right? Pump, pump. Now what's Floor. The floor. <laughs> Bleed the brakes. Good job. <laughs> I'd be nervous for a little care. <laughs> Okay, for the next part, you're gonna see me pulling off the rear wheels. I'm just doing this to get better access to the brake bleeders. Uh, when you do bleed the brakes, you wanna start with the wheel that's furthest from the master cylinder and then work your way backwards towards the closest wheel to the master cylinder. Hold, floor. Okay. Hold, floor. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with all the other sides. You kind of get the idea of what you need to do to bleed the brakes at this point. Um, once you are all done, I definitely recommend going back and checking the master cylinder. And you wanna check the master cylinder, you know, generally for leaks, but also just to make sure as you're bleeding the brakes that you don't let the level in the reservoir get too low because if you do, you'll introduce air into the system and you'll have to start all over again. So just make sure, you know, as you work from back to front, side to side, that you check periodically. The takeaway here is I was able to pick this part up super cheap locally and now my brakes work and I know I have new fresh fluid and I don't have any leaks and I'm confident and I can drive this thing, which is great because my friend and I have decided we are going to take the Dodge on a pretty long road trip. Um, my buddy's gonna fly in from out of town. We are going to go and drive around Southern Utah and we're gonna take the truck and there's probably gonna be some on-road, some off-road, uh, a lot more miles than this truck I've seen in a long time. So I just went and took it to the alignment shop um, and I got it aligned and I've got a ton of parts coming in that you are gonna get to see in future videos. We're gonna change all the rest of the fluids. Um, so we're gonna change front and rear differential and the transfer case, all fresh fluid in there. Um, I've got some new valve cover gaskets. We're gonna do a basic, very basic ignition tune-up on this thing. So distributor cap, distributor rotor, plugs. I think the wires are okay, so I'm chances are I'm gonna leave those I may grab a set of points. I don't know, it's still points condenser, but that seems to be okay. Um, what else? I'm gonna install some gauges. So this is not gonna be the final gauges for this truck, but I, I did pick up a set of autometer um, gauges, which I am going to install so that I can see what my fuel level is and really see like a more accurate, you know, what my temps and voltage and all that stuff is like, because we're gonna be on the road for a while. Um, so in future videos, you're going to see all of that. I'm going to have to get that done quickly because we're leaving here in just a couple of weeks. So I'm going to try and really focus on content on this truck and getting it all the way ready to be out and on the road driving. And then we're going to hit the road for over a thousand miles. So you will see all of that stuff on future videos on this channel. And like I said, I'm super pumped to get on the road. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it um, interesting. Once we get done with the road trip, there will be more comment content, um, but please hit subscribe and that way you get notified when new videos come out on the channel. That's gonna wrap it up for today. See you next time on Truck and Roll.